Hi guys, so I kind of have been wanting to do this for a while, but I didn't know the best way to do it. Um, as some of you may know, I, well, you didn't know it was me, but I posted on MMC Confessions that I wanted to talk about the racism that I've experienced at Marymount, and I didn't know the best way to do it, so I'm just making this video and I'm going to read what I wrote. I recently read a blog post about the race problem at Marymount, and it made me think about my own experiences with racism at Marymount. I'm a transfer student, so this was my very first semester at MMC, and as a student slash actor of color, I've come to believe that racism is just part of the game. I know that's awful, but it's the only way I can bring myself to cope with the racism I've encountered in my life. I figure that if I can just suck it up and deal with it now, then I'll be able to expose all the racists when I hopefully earn a platform in the industry. My very first racist encounter at MMC came just about three weeks into the semester when I had taken a trip home for my sister's quinceañera. I had informed all of my professors whose classes I'd be missing about the trip, and while I was gone, I heard that one of my professors told the class that I was in Puerto Rico. Now, this was quite weird because I'm not Puerto Rican, and I've never even been to Puerto Rico. I'm also pretty sure that this teacher had a discussion with me about this trip where I mentioned that home was Arizona. That's right, I'm from Arizona, and I'm Mexican. Now, I laughed this incident off with my classmates and tried to pass it off as an honest mistake, I mean, I knew it was racist, but I tried to get over it because, in the grand scheme of things, I guess it wasn't really that big of a deal. I mean, even in writing this, I feel like I'm downplaying it, but the fact of the matter is that this comment was, in fact, racist. It clearly clumps all Latino people together in, into being from one place. I just wasn't used to it being Puerto Rico because where I'm from, everyone is automatically perceived as Mexican. Nonetheless, I brushed this off and tried to move forward. The next racist encounter happened with the same teacher. Now this incident is a little difficult to talk about because it came soon after the first incident and it also has happened with other people in the past. I was in class one day and doing my work and my teacher came over to see if, how I was doing and to offer help if I needed any, as they often do. The weird part about this incident is that it happened while I was re receiving a compliment, so it really shocked me. The teacher approached me and gave me a compliment, but they called me Hernandez. My name is Hernan. This one really upsets me because I've gone through the whole, oh, maybe it was an honest mistake, but no, it's not an honest mistake. It's not an honest mistake because it shows how you don't value my name. It shows how you're familiar with the Hispanic name Hernandez and it's easy to spew it out when addressing me. When this happened, I was in complete shock and I didn't tell anyone about it because it's embarrassing. It was humiliating. I'm at this school studying what I love and I feel like it's a good fit for me. And I'm really just starting to enjoy myself, but I've already had two racist encounters within the first month. The third racist encounter is probably the most severe of the batch. I should have reported this, but I'm new, so I didn't want to rock the boat. I think a few people might remember this incident seeing as it happened in front of the whole class. We'll circle back to that. So I'm in acting class, and my scene partner and I have just presented our scene. Our teacher has some obvious problems with our choices, and we also have some bad actor habits coming through. So he stops the scene and begins to work with us. At first I think, no big deal, just a typical acting class, but then he begins to say things that aren't sitting well with me. They start to talk about the choices I'm making in the scene and how the characters shouldn't be mad at the racist remark that the, women, that the woman I'm talking to is making. They said that there's no reason for me to be playing it angrily, and that quite frankly it makes the character unlikable. They went as far as to tell me that it was me as the actor making these assumptions about the other character and that I just had to get over it. Not realizing that, one, it's strenuous to throw an actor of color into a scene where they're experiencing racism. Two, you're white, so you don't get to have an opinion on what upsets me in terms of racism, and three, the last time we worked the scene, you directed me to be nastier towards her. I wish this was the entire story, but this isn't where the racism ends. After they give me a lesson on how I should react to racism, they begin to notice that I'm swallowing the ends of my line. I'm doing a downward inflection, they begin to coach me on it, and I immediately acknowledge it and accept the coaching because a professor that I've worked with before had already told me about this problem. I was a little distraught from the previous racist encounter, so I will admit I wasn't giving it my all because I was beginning to shut down. 
we reached a point where I was having so much trouble going up on my inflection at the end of the line that the professor became frustrated and angry. Once they were angry, they proceeded to tell me I needed to make it, uh, I needed to go to the voice and speech help room because I was taking pauses in weird places and it made it sound like I didn't know English. They then followed up that up with telling me that I needed to fix this problem or I was never going to book because I'd go into an audition and the casting directors would think, wow, this kid is great, but we can't hire him because we'd have to get him an English tutor. I shouldn't have to defend myself, but let me just say my, that English is my first language. I don't have an accent. It would be impossible to sound like I don't speak English because it's my first language and I speak it perfectly. I think what they were trying to say is that it looks like I don't speak English. I'm brown, so obviously the downward inflection and pausing gave me a magical accent and it suddenly sounded like I didn't speak English. Keep in mind that I took his advice and went to the voice and speech help room and the instructor told me there was no reason for me to be there because I don't have an accent. Before going to the help room, I asked my teacher at the end of the class what they wanted me to help uh, what did they want? What they wanted me to get help on, just to be as clear as possible with the help room instructor. And they said, "Tell him you're doing a downward inflection and taking pauses that make it sound like you don't know English." I told the voice and speech instructor uh, this, and he said, "That sounds a little racially charged." I simply told the instructor, who was white, the directions I was given by my teacher, and the instructor was able to look at me and see the color of my skin and determine that the comments were racially charged. The instructor confirmed it for me. Before I want to, before I go on, I want to um, clear up that in the end, I understood what my teacher was telling me, but they didn't word it right. What they wanted me to do in the scene was be passive. The other character was being blatantly racist, but I needed to be passive and ignore her comments in order to have her help me get a job at the factory she works at. I needed to be passive in the scene in the same way I was being passive at school. As a student slash actor of color, I've been taught that when you're at school for this, you have to endure racism because it's just part of the game. We're supposed to feel lucky and grateful to be a part of these wonderful programs so we become passive. That's awful. I think about the last encounter quite often. I've told a lot of people about it, but I'm embarrassed and ashamed. I'm ashamed that I just stood there and took it. I said nothing. I've never felt so humiliated and powerless. The worst part was that this didn't happen to me alone. This happened in front of my peers, in front of my entire acting class, and no one said a word. No one said a word in that moment or even after. I'm not even sure that they realized it was racist. Did you guys know it was racist? I've never felt so humiliated. I walked home with, with my friends and cried because I had never experienced anything like that. I think what gets me the most is that this happened in front of people and no one said anything. But then again, how can I expect my peers to say something when I didn't say anything either? I just stood there and took it because it's part of the game. I know that some people might think, if I see these things as problems, then why am I still at Marymount? Well, despite these problems, I think the acting program and the school as a whole are quite wonderful. When I encountered these problems, it didn't even cross my mind to find a new program because I think the one I'm a part of is amazing. I love all of my classes and I love all of my instructors. That's why I, choose, I chose to use they when talking about my professors because I don't think they're bad instructors, nor do I think they're bad people. I don't even believe that they're racists. I think they're ignorant to their racism and measures need to be taken so that the instructors begin to un unlearn their internal racism. I love the school and I think it's wonderful, but that doesn't mean it can't be better. The school prides itself on being inclusive and that's wonderful, but as a student slash actor of color, I can confidently say that Marymount still has quite a way to go when it comes to inclusivity. I mean, I had three separate racist encounters within my first semester here. This doesn't even include the times I've witnessed racist encounters at the school. Marymount definitely has a race problem. We have a race problem and the faculty needs to discuss it and the students need to discuss it. 
students of color should not feel and be treated like second-class citizens. Um, that's it. Those are the encounters that I had at Marymount. I don't know what your guys' opinions are going to be on it. My point in doing this is simply sharing what happened. I don't think my teachers are bad people. I know you guys are probably going to be able to pick out who these incidents happened with. I don't think these are isolated incidents. I'm pretty sure other students have experienced this. And my point in doing this isn't to call them out or drag them. I simply wanted to share what happened to me and what I felt.